Okay, YouTubers, last week's Toy Tuesday was my fastest watched video ever, so thank you all very much. So for this week, I'm going to have to come up with another controversial statement about toys that's kind of clickbaity to make you watch this video. So here goes. Warning, this week's controversial... No, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm only messing. Why from so much crap sci-fi from the late 70s and early 80s did we get such epic toys? And this week's Toy Tuesday is my case in point. I consider it Corgi's last ever best toy. I'm not going to do the continuity era joke this week, but here's my logic behind why this is the last ever great Corgi toy. It's 1980, fashion is terrible and music is great. By August, Buck Rogers hits the TV screens in the UK. And sci-fi junkies like myself, awaiting the arrival of Empire Strikes Back, are able to get a quick fix on Buck Rogers in something I like to call the Lucas Paradox. You heard it here first. The Lucas Paradox explained. After the success of the film American Graffiti, director George Lucas wanted to go back to making science fiction movies. As a kid, he was a fan of Buster Crabbe, who played both Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon in cinemas in the 1930s and 40s. Captivated by these characters, he attempted to secure the rights to Buck Rogers and failed. Unable to secure the rights, he started to create his own space opera, which would eventually become Star Wars. After the success of Star Wars, the movie studio started looking through their back catalogue of franchises to see what science fiction they owned. This gave us things like Disney's Black Hole, Battlestar Galactica, The Last Starfighter, something else that was terrible. Oh yeah, and the first Star Trek movie. All of these come into the category that I like to call brilliantly rubbish. And of course, Buck Rogers, completing the Lucas Paradox and bringing us full circle back to the toy which probably would have never been made if it hadn't been for George Lucas. Before I give you a quick history of the Corgi toy, I just wanted to hijack my own video for a minute. So normally when I'm not at home recovering from an operation, my day job is collecting toys, which is quite good fun. So when you tune into next week's video, I'm actually gonna be in a completely different location. If I can explain, my name is Mark, welcome to the channel. I run a gift shop in a town called Blackpool, and we're basically a model shop, a collectible shop, a souvenir shop, and a toy museum. So if you are coming to Blackpool, you are more than welcome to message me and I will gladly show you around. If you can't come to the shop though, next week is gonna be a complete tour video. But now we're gonna get back to the history of the Buck Rogers Starfighter. Right, let me explain to you why this is Corgi's last great toy. It's 1980 and Buck Rogers is about to be shown on TV. Corgi managed to get the toy released in August, which is about the same time that they were showing it, but it had actually been a feature film the previous year. And what they did was they chopped the first two episodes up to start the TV series off, which is a bit of a weird thing to do, but it kind of worked. As I said before, TV studios have been looking to compete with Star Wars. So they were grabbing anything science fiction they could get their hands on. And the guy who developed the Buck Rogers TV show had also done Battlestar Galactica a couple of years previously. Now this is the Viper from Battlestar Galactica and it's plastic which is rubbish and it's got a silly little man inside it which is kind of cool but still a bit rubbish. I'm not going to go back in there but the worst thing about this toy and I'm going to show you is this. That is about as much fun as you can have with this toy. That's all it does. Now thankfully in the UK Corgi did not get the Worldwide Health and Safety Memo, so what they did was, well, they put some of these in it. And I don't know if you recognise those from the previous Lotus video. I actually found some on the floor from firing them last week, but that's what this fires. Now, the mechanism is classic Corgi. You've got the wings that flip out, that's great. And then you've got these two bullets. And you've got the two bullets which fire quite a long way dangerously and are easily swallowable, inhalable or poke your eye outable, is that a word? In fact, in the Great Book of Corgi here, it often quotes the fact that these things were designed to easily pass through the digestive system of a child, even though they had no scientific evidence that they would. I like the fact that my generation, using natural selection, tested all the toys for future generations to be safe. Basically, we got to lick all the lead paint off them, fire those into our eyes and inhale them and get them stuck in our ears and up our noses, cut our fingers on all the sharp edges, just so that toys can be safe today. It's all part of the service us adults have provided for younger generations. We also had a great time messing about with the toys. By the time Corgi had got the model out and it hit the TV screens, they were in serious trouble. The fact that they had to lay off a lot of the staff who'd created Corgi's legendary toys around this time means that afterwards they were kind of stuck when it came to making things, other than sports cars with doors that could open. They never really did 
did anything complicated and mechanical in miniature ever again, really. Despite selling nearly 400,000 of these, by the end of 1980, Corgi would have made a £7 million loss, even though they had some fantastic toys in the catalogues. I mean, that's not to mention the, the Batmobiles, the James Bond cars, they had sports cars, they had other TV and film related products. It's hard to believe that 1980 was such a difficult year for them, because two years previously, in 1978, Corgi had had the best year in its entire history of trading, and sadly by 1983 when this toy was deleted, they were completely bust. There's one thing about this toy that I've always hated, and that's the stupid little carry handle that they put on the front. And the only reason, and they've done it on the small one as well, and the only reason I can presume is that these were thought maybe to be too sharp. In fact, I've always wanted to cut that bit out. But yeah, cut that bit out and make it look how it should have done. But surely if they were concerned about health and safety and not bothered about the bullets, but bothered about that, you'd have made these bits in rubber or just put a plastic tip in like that and rounded it off a bit. Then surely it would look more like it did in the TV show. That's something I've never really understood about the toy. The other thing as well is they've put wheels on it but they're about as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. They're worse than the wheels on the underwater Lotus. I know I always say this, I've, I've spent about 10 minutes slagging the toy off. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It looks great, it's so cool. It's a good representation of what was in the TV show. It's great fun. I loved it as a kid. When I get it in my hand as an adult, it takes me back to the point when I was a child. And that's kind of the point of these toys. It has bits that fire out. It has wings that do that. You can pull it apart and put it back together again. I think it's a fantastic toy. The other thing as well, I mean, with all Corgi toys, is it has good box artwork, but also you've got these little tiny figures inside. Now I'm gonna carefully open this and normally make, normally when I carefully open something, I make a pig's ear of it. Oh no, that went relatively well. Look at that one. That one's minty fresh, shiny and new. There we go. I'm gonna come off. You're gonna come off without me breaking you. There we go. Managed to do that without breaking it. Let's put that there. Yeah, so you got these two figures with it. Now again, in the Great Book of Corgi, it says the model comes with Wilma, Book and Tweaky, but it doesn't unless that's meant to be Wilma, which I can't think that it is. No, it can't be. While we're on the subject of Twicky, the voice for the character was done by the guy who did the voice for Bugs Bunny, which is an odd thing. And he also made that really annoying noise that I'm not going to make. And initially that was the only sound he was going to make because he used to carry a computer around on his chest, which looked a little bit like Flavor Flav with his clock. That's me showing my age using that as a reference, isn't it? And the producers thought that was going to be a little bit too much like R2-D2 and C-3PO. So they gave him Bugs Bunny's voice. Another interesting fact about the TV show is it had lots of cameos from famous people. The Joker, Catwoman, and the Riddler, Buster Crab, who is the original Book Rogers, and also the kid from Different Strokes. And of course, I couldn't talk about Book Rogers without mentioning my favorite bird on the TV. And it's such a great spaceship design as well. Normally in TV productions, these things were a little bit rubbish and the effects were a bit crap. I think that's a great piece of design. In fact, it was actually rejected by Battlestar Galactica. Originally, this was gonna be the Viper and they just didn't think it was cool enough, so they came up with this. Well, I think that's a contributing factor to how cool the TV show was. Now, I did mention the health and safety memo with the rockets before. I love doing that. And how have I managed to get this far into the video without even mentioning Wilma either, who started out as a strong female role model and ended up dressed like a kissogram in a true feat of 70s misogyny. Oh, and the second season had the guy from My Fair Lady in it for some reason, wearing a cardigan in space. I know it's cold in space, but a cardigan's not gonna give you that much protection. If you're young and you haven't seen any of it, what I will say is don't waste your life on it. Spend more time and effort trying to find the toys, like the Corgi Book Roger Starfighter, because they're epic, and also because this is Corgi's last ever great toy. After this, to quote a friend, they were just kind of dialing it in. Next week's Toy Tuesday is gonna be a shop tour, and there's also gonna be a giveaway in that video as well. Make sure you've got the notifications switched on so you don't miss out. And I'll link last week's video somewhere around here if I'm able to. Also, if you have any memories of this toy that you'd like to share, please put them in the comments section below. And I will see you next week for another Toy Tuesday. Take care, stay safe, have fun, keep collecting.